everyone, welcome to 6, 7, and 8 channel of Baijus. I'm your teacher Ankita and I welcome you all in today's very special class where we will be discussing about the very interesting topic which is food preservation technique which is a part of the microorganism chapter. So what we'll be discussing in this particular class is different food preserving technique. It's a very important topic so please make sure you stay with us till the end and to note down the important points that we'll be discussing in today's class, please make sure you have your notebook and your pen or the pencil. Now that we are all set, let's get started. The first question that we will be tackling now is that what is food preservation? And to answer it, these are the techniques that we use to prevent the spoilage of the food, right? To prevent the food poisoning in the food and to prevent the microbial contamination in the food. Now we all know that it's very important for us to preserve the food. And I'm sure you would have seen your parents preserving the food. Because they know that if they will not preserve the food, the food will get contaminated or it will get spoiled and it will be unfit for us to eat. So that's a very important point that all of us should remember. In the different techniques that we have in food preservation, we have storage and packaging, pasteurization, uh, salting or curing, chemical preservation, sugaring and pickling. We will be discussing about all of this in detail and let's get started. So broadly, we can divide the food preservation under two important categories, physical and chemical. First, we'll be discussing about the physical method of preservation. In this category, we have three very important methods. First, we have storage and packaging, pasteurization and sun drying. Let's tackle one by one each. So first we are starting with the storing and packaging. I'm sure if you go to a supermarket, you would have seen the sealed pack jars and the packets. It could be a packet of chips or it could be a packet of some dolls, etc. Right? I'm sure you would have seen them seal tight or air tight, we would say. So this is a very, very important part. Uh, it's a very, very important process that we have. What it does, we will see that dry fruits and even vegetables are sold in the sealed airtight packets to prevent the attack of the microorganisms. Why we are using the sealed airtight packets? So that we can prevent the attack of the microorganism. So over here, what we know that air is reduced, right? So what, what are the methods of course, what is the procedure? So the air will be removed from these packets, right? And apart from preventing the attack of the microorganism, it actually helps in increasing the shelf life of the food also. That is a reason if you go to any of the supermarket and if you pick a product, at the back of it, you will be able to, able to see the date, the expiry date, right? In the bottle of pickles, uh, packets of chips, dal etc they have a good expiry date basically they will have a good duration so they what happens over there they're increasing the shelf life of the food so that's a very very important technique that we see in the market followed by the next which is super interesting and very very important which is the pasteurization now what happens over here it is related to the milk and let's understand what is happening over here. So what we do, I'm sure you would have seen your parents, right, boiling the milk. So what they do, usually they just put the uh, milk on a pot, uh, in a pot, right, on a gas and they just boil it. But before the milk comes to you, if it's coming in a packet, we have this particular procedure which is happening. Let's take a look at it. So what happens when the industry have a raw milk, what they will do, they will actually boil it at the 70 degrees Celsius for 15 to 30 seconds. For a very short duration, they will boil it at the very high temperature, which is 70 degrees Celsius. After that, there is a sudden chilling of the milk at 5 degrees. So there is a hot and there is a cold. And once that is done, it will be went. It will be going for the packaging. And that's how we get the tetra packs and the packed milk packets right, that, that we have at our home. So this milk is a pasteurized milk. So it have all uh, it has undergone the boiling and the cooling. So if it comes to us, even if you don't boil it, it's perfectly fit for us to consume it. But I'm sure what we do at our home, we boil it again. That is also perfectly and completely normal. 
So this is a very important step that assure that the microorganisms are killed, right? Of course, there are no microorganisms that will be here. Apart from that, we have very interesting information. Now I'm sure you would have seen your parents keeping the food in the refrigerator. There's one more reason for it. When we keep the food items right in the fridge, what happens? The bacteria will not be able to attack, right? The bacteria does not, will, will not be able to survive at that particular temperature. And that's a very important point that we have over here. So with this, we are done with this, right? And over here, just for all of us to remember, we have the definition of the pasteurization. So it's a method of preserving in which pathogens are destroyed in certain food like milk by heating. And then we see the sudden cooling also. Moving to the third very interesting topic, which is very easy and which is sun drying. Now, this is I'm sure you would have seen your grandparents do it, right? Or maybe your parents also if they are making pickles. So what we have, we if we have any fruit, right? If you want to make the pickle out of it, what we'll do? We'll put them under the sun, right? So what the sun drying is doing is actually taking oil, taking all the moisture out. So whatever water content we have will be moving out and hence increasing the shelf life of the food. Because if the moisture is there, right, what will happen? The microorganisms can attack the food. So we are clear with the physical methods of preservation. In that we have three, we have storage and packaging, we have sun drying and we have the pasteurization. Now let's talk about the chemical methods of preservation. Here we will be uh, looking at various different methods, but let's understand first why or what is chemical method. When we use the salt or edible oils, right? We, when we use them in the preservation, it's the chemical method, right? And this actually helps to check the growth of the microorganism. Therefore, we call it as the preservative. I am sure if you now go to your kitchen after watching this video, not now, but if you go and take a packed food, you will be able to find a very important ingredient in it, which is the preservative. Now, these preservatives will actually make sure to increase the shelf life of the, pro uh, of the product, right? And will make sure there's no attack of the microorganism. So now that we are clear what are the chemical methods, let's talk about the different types we have over here. We have the use of common salt if you are using the sugar and if you are using the oil and the vinegar. Starting with the common salt. If we are using the salt, right, we call it as curing also. Common salt has been used to preserve the meat and fishes for ages. Why is that? It's super, super important. When we add the salt on the meat, right, it actually keep a check on the growth of the bacteria. It actually avoid the growth of the bacteria. And it is also used to preserve amla or mangoes, tamarind, etc. If your parents are making the pickle, I'm sure that will be the very, very interesting step that you will see that they'll be adding a lot of amount of salt. That is all about salting. Then let's talk about the sugaring. What we have in sugaring? We add the sugar, your jams, jellies are made, in, uh, are made by using the sugar, right? And sugar actually inhibits the growth of the microbes. And then we, uh, if you talk more further, we have some chemical preservation. Maybe we have some chemicals like sodium benzoate and sodium metabolism um, sulfite, right? Very, very interesting and super important uh, chemical preservative we have. So we have sodium benzoate and sodium metabisulfite, right? And they are commonly used as a preservative in the foods. So please take a note of these. They are very, very important. Now we are clear with the sugaring and the chemical preservation. Now let's talk about the last one where we are, where we are using the oil and the, the vinegar. So what we have in this? Now, of course, if you're making the pickle, we'll be using the oil and the vinegar and they will be pre preventing, they will prevent the spoilage of the pickle because bacteria cannot live in such environment. So bacteria will not be able to survive in an environment where we have the oil as well as the vinegar. So hence, they will be stopping the growth or inhibiting the growth of the bacteria. When we talk about vegetable, fruits and fish and the meat are often preserved by using this particular method. 
with this everyone we have understood what are the different food preservation techniques that are followed across some of in the food industry some of these in, uh, methods are followed at our home so i hope that all of you have got on a hang of and the understanding of all of these super interesting and super easy food preservation technique if you have please make sure you hit the like button for the video do share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel and you can write in the comment section below that how you in, how you felt about this particular session right i have a very interesting homework question for you i will be waiting for your answer write down in the comment section that what is the pasteurization right right about i'm just writing over here write about what is pasteurization is what are the important steps that we follow over there i'll be waiting for your answer everyone with that i'll say bye bye to each one of you do take care of yourself lots of love and keep on learning with byjuice